So this is about a uh, cathode ray oscilloscope where they give you the display and then some, it shows the trace and the settings of cathode ray oscilloscope of the output voltage of a uh, bicycle a dynamo. Okay, the first question is, let's state the type of currents produced. What do you think? Direct currents or alternating currents? AC, yeah? Okay, alternating currents. Yeah? Okay, is uh, alternating currents. Now, if, if it's direct currents, then it's a straight line. Yeah? You will get a straight line. Yeah? Okay, so if you see the current up, down, up, down, up, down, then this is alternating currents. B, yeah? determine the peak voltage produced by the dynamo. How many volt? The peak voltage. Cindy say 10 volt. Yeah? Okay, that's correct. You see, yeah, the the Y gains, yeah? the Y gains, volts per division, the Y gains points to 5 volt per division, means that uh, here is 0, okay, 5 10 okay so the peak voltage is uh, is measured from the center here so each divisions each division 5 okay uh, so this 10 so 0 5 10 uh, because because the uh, y gain is set to 5 uh, so then uh, it's 10 volt then uh, next question is related to uh, B uh, okay they want us to find the root mean square voltage uh, VRMS VRMS. So VRMS is equal to the peak voltage V not divided by the square root of two. So uh, in this case, the peak voltage is ten. So divided by square root of two, seven point zero seven one uh, volt. Question D. Determine the frequency of output voltage of the dynamo. Frequency, yeah. Frequency can be calculated by using the formula F equal to 1 over T. Yeah? F equals to 1 over T. F is the frequency. What is T? Period. So T is the period, and period is the time for one complete oscillation. So, so let's see. Uh, the time for one complete oscillation. Complete oscillation is from here. Okay, Start from here and then go down. Yeah? So this is one complete oscillations. So two divisions, eh? two division. Then we check the time base. The time base is set to 20 milliseconds. Eh? 20 milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds. Eh? So uh, 20, 40, okay? 40 milliseconds, milliseconds. So the period is equal to 20, a milli is times 10 to the power of negative 3, yeah? okay, 10 to the power of negative 3, okay, or uh, 20 milli second is equal to 0 0.02 seconds, and this is equal to 50 hertz, uh, 50 hertz. Let's see this one, E. Sketch the new trace in diagram below if the time base setting is set to 10 milliseconds per division. 10 milliseconds. Huh? 10 milliseconds means, um, okay, so this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And just now we learned that the period, the period is equal to uh, 20 milliseconds, huh? the period. Okay, the period is not 20, 40. Yeah? I make a mistake here. Sorry, I make a mistake. That's not 20, it's 40. Yeah? So this is 40 milliseconds. 40 milliseconds. Uh, so 0 0.04. Uh, 0. Uh, so it's a 40, then it's uh, 25. 25 hertz. Uh. So I'm sorry, I make a mistake. Because 20 is just a time base, uh, setting of the time base. So 40 milliseconds is the period, eh? 20, 40, 40 milliseconds. So this one, uh, 40 milliseconds for one complete oscillation. So let's label. Okay, we start from here, maximum, we go to uh, 10 volt, and then come back here, and then go down, negative 10 volt, and come back here. Okay, so that is one complete oscillation. Eh? So you see, if you're asked to sketch the graph, okay, so first uh, you see the time base, okay, labels, huh? labels the x-axis, huh? time base is, is for x-axis, y gain is for uh, y-axis, huh? okay, time base x-axis, so 10, 20, 30, 40, okay, the period is uh, 40 milliseconds, so 40 milliseconds to make one complete oscillation, so go up, 
down and they continue actually okay so this is the answer okay so this is the structure of a cathode ray oscilloscope so first they want you to name the part again okay, or label the part what is P cathode cathode Q Q is the grid or control grid okay control grid R both R and S are a node the first one is the focusing a node yes focusing a node followed by accelerating a node and then so B state the type of motions from Y to Z um, not Y to Z I think should be a P to S P to S and from S to the screen do some correction here P to S and S to the screen but what types of motions uh, from P to S yes uniform acceleration is correct uniform accelerations okay S to screen what do you think from S to screen now P to S accelerate is because we have this accelerating A node eh? accelerating A node it will accelerate the electrons eh? then after uh, after this S eh, the electron will move forward due to the inertia it move forward due to the inertia without any without any force eh? okay, without any force and uh, since there's no force then the, the electron will move with, with uniform velocity eh? uniform velocity okay question four this is the input and then so this is the resistor and if we measure then we have these types of waveform okay obviously yeah obviously this is uh, alternating currents right okay because uh, if direct current then you get straight line yeah? so this one go up down up down up down is the alternating currents so for a yeah? for a is uh, alternating current uh, B state the name of component Y in diagram B so what's that what is component Y component Y is a diode eh? okay it's a diode and what's the functions of a diode what's the functions of diode what's the function of a diode convert alternating currents to direct currents so there's the functions of a diode eh? to convert alternating currents to direct current eh? okay in the rectifications you can act as a rectifier D draw the wave waveform produced on the screen in diagram B okay uh, what happened is that uh, the diode uh, do not allow the diode do not allow the currents to flow back so uh, so the currents that move backwards will be cut off eh? okay so this current here will be cut off this current will be cut off okay so you only see this okay this and this so here no current flow eh? okay no current flow and uh, you need to connect this uh, if there's no uh, no current flow still eh? okay still it will show uh, a zero currents okay this shows a zero currents eh? so this is a waveform producer eh? this is a waveform produce by comparing the waveform in diagram A and diagram B, name the process involved in diagram B. Okay, so what's the name of this process? Process of converting uh, AC to DC. Rectification. Rectification. Eh? Rectification. Or you can say it's a half wave rectification. Rectification or half wave rectification, both also correct. Half wave rectification is more specific. Yep. But in this question, uh, uh, I think just put the rectifications, uh, you can get uh, the full marks already. Uh. Component Q is made from a semiconductor material. Uh, one type of semiconductor is the N type semiconductor. Explain how the N type semiconductor is produced. Uh. Uh, the N type semiconductor is produced by duping. So, N type we dupe in a, a pentyl valence or trivalence. Uh, impurity any idea pentyl valence or trivalence pentyl valence uh, pentyl valence has five electron uh. so pentyl valence uh. pentyl valence means it has five electrons in the, in the outermost shell okay 
So duping uh, pentavalence uh, impurity, okay, or substance or impurities or atom, okay, uh, let's say atoms lah, into an uh, in intrinsic semiconductor. So they want you to explain, uh, okay. So uh, this is what you do, okay. Then you, you need to explain why, when you dupe in these uh, pentavalence atoms into intrinsic semiconductors, they become n-type semiconductors. This produces a lot of free electrons in the semiconductor. So the electrons act as the majority charge carrier and hence the semiconductor become an n-type semiconductor okay. so uh, how to produce and explain uh, explain why you do this then you will get an n-type semiconductor okay you uh, dupe in pentavalence atoms, you will produce a lot of free electron, and this free electron is the majority charge carrier. Okay, Electrons carry negative charge. Eh? So if it's the majority charge carrier, then this semiconductor will become an n-type semiconductor. 